want someone to follow me because of the strength and the figure. You are not hearing footsteps, but you feel like ah, somebody is, something is wrong. Because of the stories that you have heard, you can imagine the power of the story. And I want you to know that uh, the media, please help me. Amen. So I want you to know that the devil also has an agenda. So it is, it is not just the storyline. You know, I said that to let us know how fear came in. Then, with involvement going to church, my dad will always say, yeah, go. Let's, we, will, we will not miss church. And sometimes, I always just want to, because somehow we just go late, and I don't like to go to church late. So I want to stay in the adult church. My dad said, no, children's church, you are a child. So somehow, with the stories that we definitely hear during Sunday school, I began to understand, okay, even if there is witchcraft, there is a higher power. Do we understand? But how do I, I harness this power? How do I understand and believe in this power? Uh, sometimes, even we might grow over the years just with that question, and we don't have it answered. And so, it looks as if the journey of faith is like a story that you just have to keep living by, but not necessarily getting involved in. Not really... Um, imbibing it into you, understanding that it is your own script, that it is your own pattern. Because if you understand your script, if you understand your pattern, you will want to walk in that line. There's actually actors. There are actors here, you know, some of us will watch movies. And uh, another thing, when I watch movies, I always, I'm always, whoever sits beside me is in, is blessed. Because of, oh, what's happening here? What? I remember my my brother then, at some point, he just, he would just move away. Because, like, this is a movie. Then he said, this is a movie. I said, yes, it's a movie. Can you imagine? What would he say? This is a movie. It was later I realized I was trying to point my attention to the fact that it was a script. So someone had to just act it out. That yes, as much as possible, they want to make it real. It is still what? Not real. Do we understand? So sometimes, we walk this journey of Christianity as if it's a movie. Now, if you have your neighbor, if you are, we are not watching a movie now, just tap your neighbor and say, wake up. Wake up. Your journey of Christianity is not a movie. This time around, it is real. So sometimes when the devil brings his own agenda, that will definitely look real. But I want to tell you that more real, right, our reality is now with the scripture, with God that we have been given from the beginning. Everyone is running the script. We are all running the script, either you know it or not. But if as, a, as an executive producer of a movie or you own the story and then you brought in actors to act a particular part, if they do not act it well, what would you do? You would rather change them, wouldn't you? You would change them. If you do not change them, you would tell them, no, do it again. That's what you can do. Do 20 times, 50 times. And sometimes they will say, ha, ha, ha. The executive producer, oh my God, you just have to get this part. You just have to, then they will even, actually when they do behind the scenes. But in this Christianity, there is no behind the scenes. That's another thing. Do we get that? So the things that are attached to movie, it is not attached to your life because your life as a spirit being is real. And so is your journey of faith. Faith is a journey that will keep getting better and better by the day. Hallelujah. What is that journey that you are in? Do you think it is actually real? Because sometimes when you fall into diverse temptations, we begin to question God. When you ask God, why me? Some people will understand that you are yet to understand your journey. Because if not you, who should it be? You can only exercise faith when there is trouble. 
You will exercise faith when there is no clarity. You will exercise faith when there is problem. You will exercise, do you understand? The only reason why you're exercising faith is because of what is happening. So the moment something is happening to you and then you are asking, why me? You should know that you're supposed to exercise faith. The Bible says that for without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. Please, can I come down? Okay. So I need um, two people. Just quickly. Two people. So how do you develop it? Let's go to the next slide. Two people. I love the fact that, okay, okay, you can distinguish, uh, you can have that difference. Look at the two of them. Please tell me what is different about them. Their height. Okay, one is wearing glasses. Their shirt is different. The color of shoes. Bands, their haircut, what else? Rings, yes, shoes, bed, the quantity is different. <laughs> I need to tell you this even if you are husband and wife, husband and wife, couple, even if you are siblings. Even if you are twins, triplets, you are different. One of the ways not to get your faith wavering is not to compare yourself. You are obviously different. Even at work, sometimes maybe you spent a particular year, uh, maybe let's say 10 years, and then you have a colleague who spent same, maybe 10 years, and then there's a position that is open at the office, and then he was considered, and you are not considered. You say, why, why not him? Why? You start asking questions. It might just be his time. Maybe there are some things you are even yet to learn that you have not learned. Maybe you are even yet to understand what patience is on your journey. Maybe you are yet to understand the pattern which God is taking your own life. But it will be a mistake if you begin to compare yourself with yourself. And I want to tell you that when we compare ourselves with ourselves, that is where the devil is coming in to sow the seed of sadness, to sow the seed of bitterness, to sow the seed of low self-esteem that you are not good enough. And then the gift that is, that is actually deposited inside of you will not be expressed. Rather, you look inward and begin to stir up that gift. Then you are sad about the gift of someone who is being expressed. Forgetting that you have yours that you need to put out there. Be careful. The devil is not playing. You must be aware of your journey. Amen. You can have your seat. Thank you. Many times have we compared ourselves, even in marriage, the milestones, success, whatever it is that you define as success. How many times have we done that? Comparison, I just thought to share that with us. Let's go to the next slide. Are you able to go there? Okay. Let's go to Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. Say, we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters. And rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more. And the love all of you have for one another is increasing. That means love has the capacity to increase. Right? Beautiful. I want you to answer me. Let's go. 
Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. What are you enduring? What do you have that you are enduring? Do you have anything you are enduring at this time? Let's go. Do you have anything you are enduring? Maybe it's a trial and then you are just waiting on God for. Beautiful. It says we thank God we are enduring it. Can you imagine? Not that we thank God you are faced with that trial. But that you are able to exhibit. You are able to have a, a, a posture of endurance. If you want to walk the journey of life with God without endurance, that's not going to happen. Let's go. And he said your faith is growing. So he first is to nurture your faith with the word. Let's go to Romans chapter 10 verse 17 and let's just read that out. If you are with your Bible, just let's go. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Nurture your faith with the word. Is anyone there? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, as humans, we are wired to listen. We are wired to hear. Now, you know, I said the devil is not playing. He's not doing this. He's not doing this. See, he is intentional about every of his plans. And because sometimes, and most times, he knows the wiring. He knows the way to come in. One, through the things you hear. Two, through the things you see. Do you understand? And at the end of the day, where you go, wherever you find yourself, he knows that whatever is happening around there, you will hear it. Whatever is happening around there, you will see it and you will partake of it. So here he's saying, hearing by the word of God is how you get your faith to grow. It's how you get the strength and the stamina to stand, to be able to even enjoy. Endurance is not, won't just stand as an entity. Endurance is that, just like that help. Please, I need like three people behind me. Three people. Please, quickly, quickly. Boy, girl, female, male. All right. You will stand behind me, right? You st yeah, beautiful. You stand behind her. Go, 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 go. Let's go. I need help. You will stay here. You will stay here. Just hold on to her. But please don't put your hands on each other. Then you. So you. See, there are a lot of, for example, maybe this is endurance. This is patience. Long suffering. Please, how many fruits of the spirit do we have? Nine. Yeah, let's put them. We need that means we need nine people. Three, four. Grace Israel, you are blessed. Let's go. Let's go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, I am the child of God here. It says faith comes by hearing. The first faith that you had is that you believe that Christ is the Son of God. And then you gave yourself to him. Do we, do we understand? So at that point in time, we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into what? Into the kingdom of light. And so we have illumination in our hearts. The height of our understanding has been enlightened that, hey, I am not of this world. All right? I am of Christ. And so I must go. At that point, we become born again. So the, one of the characteristics of someone that is being born is a baby, right? So we, we became babies. But we must grow. So Apostle Paul said, do what? Desire what? The sincere milk of the word. You know, babies, you give them milk to grow. And so by the time we keep growing, at some point, your baby will stop taking milk, will begin to take food. But these things, they, they come in the package of the word of God. So if you have a Christian, a baby Christian, someone who is just born again, and then refuses to read the word, he or she will not grow. Even though he's in a church environment. Do we understand? So that is why sometimes we might say, ah, but he has been around for a while. He's even a worker. He's even a minister. He's a this, he's a that. But you can't see the fruit 
of, of, of a mature tree. You know, when a tree is matured, it begins to bear fruit. So you can't see any fruit. You can't see long suffering, gentleness. Do you understand? If you touch him, he's all ch- touchy. Ah, no, forget to. Because I have a Christian. Ah, no, 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 no. This is because he's touch. This is a Jolofo. Those are right. You know, it's, it's rain that fell and put uh, ducks and, and chicken and pigeon, everybody together. Do you understand? Uh, what, what, when we start geography that we are drawing map now, was that the, the nose is... Uh, do you understand? You met me here, you did, 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 but you forget. Let's go ahead, mention another one. Love. As a matter of fact, the first one is joy. Ah, uh, sorry, love. Do you understand? Joy. Peace. See how, see the flow. Let's go. I love, let's go. Love. Know your names now. You are being renamed. Please. Open it. It's in Galatians chapter. Long suffering. Kindness. Kindness. Goodness. Goodness. Know your name. Immediately, just say goodness. Faithfulness. 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 Gentleness. 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 And what? And self-control. That last one. That last one. Everybody will test it. Your children will test your self-control. Your wife, your husband will test your self-control. Your colleague, anybody will test yourself. In fact, your baby that is talking me would will test your self-control. <laughs> By the time he bites you, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Amen. He said, um, faith comes by hearing. So the word of God, you hear that, oh, give your life to Christ, and then you start to, and the, and the Holy Spirit convicted you. And maybe you had the gift of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you even started speaking in tongues. But there is the love that you felt from God. And so you reciprocate, uh, reciprocated the love by loving him. First, do we understand that now? Better say that while we are yet sinners, Christ what? Died for us. He showed us that love. And so you reciprocated that. You, you gave your life to him. And so the, fruit, the first fruit you bore was love. And then you are so excited because you said, ah, so I can have someone that would actually forgive me all my sins. So it came to us, joy. You were excited. And then you, were, you had that, that excitement to the extent that whoever comes in contact with you, you are always eager to share the word. Do we get that? To share, ah, this is my testimony. This is what happened to me. Remember when we said, nurture your faith, what? Through what? Testimonies of faith. The testimonies, then you begin to share. This is what God did for me. Oh my God, ever since I felt this, I felt that. But don't forget that the moment you are still there, you, you are supposed to keep hearing the word. Study the word because as babes, you must grow. So sometimes you are being given that word just the way we are here in church. You are being fed. And at times you are at home, you will open the word and you read. And because the verse says, you will be washed by the words that I was speak to you. So the word has the capacity to wash us clean, to make us better. We there? Joy. What's your name? You will, your children will fly if you have baby. And so there's a peace that comes with it. That now I have settled this. Now eternal life is mine. Not only that, I've been translated in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is the one that rules the world. The kingdom of God, if you can enter it, is doing things in God's kingdom the way God wants it done. He is the king of that kingdom. And so everyone listens to the king. Everyone bows to the king. Everyone yields to the king. And so there is a peace that it has been settled once and for all. You had peace with your new identity. You had peace with who you are. And so you keep growing in faith. Are you with me? Don't forget that we have not left this fruit. These fruits are still right there on the tree. Bearing it. Long suffering. Thou shalt suffer long. It is, do you know that when I first got in contact with this particular thing. Why, why would the fruit be long and then I saw suffering? 
Why must I suffer? And then not a short time, but long. And then there's another particular verse that say, when we suffer a little while. Ah, have you ever picked that as a, even as a promise? Ah, I don't want this suffering to end. You will say, you don't want, but there is an endurance. That is it. Do you understand? It's also endurance. You must be able to endure. Let's go. Kindness. How many of us are kind? I have someone that is almost friends to everybody. And then I asked, how come? Even the people that we think, um, we had someone that she's very hard to reach. You can't really get to her heart. She can't, she won't talk, but she talks to him personally. You know, a family setting, a extended family, but she talks, I said, ah, Ebon, come. I have to call him. What did you do? He said, I don't do anything. No. I said, but this person is just, eh, and he comes, he talks, and then he said, what should you do? I said, what do you think you should do? And then she says, I said, if you go and do what you think you should do, I said, no wonder. Because he would not bother to tell you, do this, don't do this. That's his own concern. He will just serve as a talking board, as a board to you. Once you are done, whatever he decides to do, do. That is it. So it was very easy for people. I said, that's not being kind. I said, you're just being nice. You should tell this person the truth. Ah, she's still talking to me. If I start, she will not talk. You will not hear anything again. <laughs> so he said, let me just be the channel to do the information. Well, maybe. But sometimes when you really see a wrong, do you write it? And that is the kindness of God. Don't misunderstand what kindness is with being nice. It corrects us. The Bible says that he that the Father loves, he what? He chastises. So that is his kindness. So when you pray, that's a whole makashakata. Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell. In, when you are dwelling, you can't dwell anyhow. You can't dwell anyhow. Because when you are misbehaving, it will call you what? To order. And that, uh, David said, his loving kindness endures forever. You can see the fruit now. His loving, where is kindness? His loving kindness endures so, when your father's loving kindness is enduring, my dear, your loving kindness should do what? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready to endure? Let's go. Goodness. How many of us are good? Really. Really. Like, really. In a sense. Do you even do self-examination? To really check if you are good, or it's just by words of mouth. It's a movie. You're just playing it. You're just going along, getting into just the activities, but knowing fully well that there's always more. Surely goodness and mercy. How many of us have mercy? I love Revelations 12:11. Let's go to Revelations 12:11. says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimonies and they loved not their lives unto death. What is the word of your testimony? When you are building strong faith, sometimes when it's about to be on, you're about to be shaken, there must be a process where you will go back to the past. Has God ever been faithful? That if he can help me thus far, he will still take it ahead. So you shouldn't have your faith shaken. That's number one. And then the words of your testimony, the, the blood of the lamb. How many of us still remember where we started from? Your redemption. Don't lose it. It counts for everything. Let's go. Faithfulness. What is faithfulness? It's faithfulness. Is forevermore. Is faithfulness. Ha, 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 ha. Is forevermore. What is faithfulness? What? To 
faithless to the end. Faithfulness is changing the status quo of what is committed to your hand, making it better. It's like you are being given raw materials, maybe food materials to cook. Your faithfulness is taking it to the kitchen, working on it, cooking, and then presenting it. You are staying faithful to the cause. Changing the status quo of what has been committed into your hands, and that is how you can show forth the glory of God. So let your good works speak. Men will see it and they will glorify your father. It is a fruit of the spirit that has to do with the fact that you are not a waster of resources. God doesn't waste his blessings. Every day you say, God bless me, God bless me. The one he blessed you yesterday, what did you do with it? The day before yesterday, what did you do with it? Because the truth is he blesses you every day. The Bible says that he loads us daily with his benefits. And I know that God will never renege on his words or promises. Whatever he says he will do, he will do it. So that of yesterday, he blessed you with it. What did you do with it? Every minute, every second. And then you say you don't have time for yourself, but you have time for social media. That you are not even socializing, but reading people's comments. I've never been there. Say, I'm, me, I'm here for the comments. <laughs> Did not even bother to socialize. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Change the status. What has been committed into your hands? Have you actually given your all to him? Your children. Are you training them? Or you are just letting time pass by? Pay their school fees, get them off. Do you ever train them to have courtesy? how to greet, how to do things, you know, just even grooming, how to have devotion themselves, how to stop the internet that when they see so, so, so alert, they should just stay away from it. They should not click all the clickables. Do you train or you instruct? Your children, God is looking at them. Because these are the people he has committed in your hands. He said that, I desire godly children from your union, right? Gentleness. I love the fact that you are the one that picked gentleness. <laughs> Mali, Kavasha, God is so good. Are you gentle? Are you gentle? Some will say, gentility is not stupidity. Yeah. But it should be gentle. Being gentle is different from being quiet. Do we know that? You know, recently I asked people just to do appraisal and I said, um, Am I gentle? I said, I said, I'm gentle. And they said, Oh, no, be gentle. You're not gentle. I said, No. You can say I'm not quiet, but I am gentle. I am gentle. I know it. <laughs> Amen. Ask yourself, are you gentle? Let's go. <sighs> Self-control, that is the last. It caps it off. The truth is, if you have all these things, you have them. Do you know that? There's no way you will grow bearing these fruits. And by the time it gets here, you will say, hey, if I do not control myself, may I not spoil all the work I have been doing? And you will know when to speak gentleness. You will know when to talk. You will know the, you, see, you will understand the times and the seasons that you are in. And then when things are trending, you will know this is not the trend. This is not what to jump on. This is not the trend. You don't jump on every challenge. It has to do with self-control. Self-control. It is not people control. Don't, don't flip it. Self. But sometimes we want to control people. We don't want to control ourselves. Amen. So while I'm growing in faith, hold on to me. I'm going to cap it up. I do not even finish. But the Lord will help us. We shall continue next week. So where is that verse that we came in? Our verse, before I said people should come out. Media. Romans. Romans 10, 17. That hearing... Faith cometh, so your faith comes now. By hearing, let's go. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing what? 
faith comes by hearing and hearing what? By the time you keep hearing the word of God, you will keep bearing fruit. The moment you stop hearing the word of God, you'll be stagnant. What happens to stagnant trees? They are unfruitful. What happens to stagnant tree is going to die very soon. What happens to stagnant tree is going to just remain and then its fruit will get rot. And then people will wonder, but what happened? He used to be on fire before. She used to be on fire before. What happened? But just because of a storm of life, just because of a misunderstanding, just because of trials and tribulations, if you do not hold forth unto your faith of the word of God that you must always hold on to and know that God will not renege. Don't forget that the devil will come with his own counterfeit word. But hold on to that word. Lay hold of it. Do not let it go and then you grow thereby and then you are able to endure the trials of the tribulations. You are able to model what it means to be a Christian. And when things are going bad, you will not say there is a casting down. That's why I say, when men are saying there is a casting down, you will say, it did not say some men also, because you are no longer a man, but you are that a child of God. Understanding yourself, understanding your identity will help you build a strong faith. Thank you so much. You can have it. One thing I'm just going to close with, we'll continue maybe next week by God's grace, is that you should have time for your life. Get a realignment. Are you that busy that you don't have time for you and your maker? It is a daily thing. It is no longer a routine of every two, two days. Do you get in and build and pray in tongues and build up yourself in your most holy faith? Or you only tap into corporate anointing? My dear, after corporate anointing, go and dwell in the secret place. Said they that dwell in the secret place of the Lord, they shall walk, they will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Then they will say, because you build up confidence, you build up strength, boldness in the secret place. That is when you can say, they will say, of the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. Let's be on our feet, please. <laughs> For what I've said, you know the things. You know, you know where you need help. And I want to tell you, it is not in the plenty of words that God will hear you because he's not deaf. I am a testimony of simple prayers and I've seen it answered. A prayer, Lord, show yourself to me. You will be shocked because he just wants you to ask not in repetition of words but you know where you need help can you just talk to him he's your father and he's here or maybe you just i even want to know is god even here you know just ask questions i know he wants to answer and maybe you need help I need help for my family. I need help for my family. I don't even know who I am. How am I able to lead my children? How am I able to lead my wife? How am I able to help my family? How am I able to even help my siblings? If you are with your father, you must be very careful of the things you say. And much more of the things you say out there. What you say to your father secretly, you must be consistent with it even when you are out. Because it's the Lord that wears the spirit. I just want you to talk to him. You have that time. Even if your heart is heavy, it is that prayer time. Just open up. Talk to him. He said, as these people have said in my ears, so shall I do. So shall I do. Marike bashe henge doza veshke ege doza. Reta malem breke boja. Le rege deze breke doza veshke emba lige doza. 
Resetema libro kabosh ke enge dize te ma libro kabosh ata handel ke rosa. Let us not talk malik kabosh ke enge doza vish ke idu zati amba ke rosa. Ah, the faithfulness of God endures forever. He keeps changing us, and we keep getting better. Are you faithful? Are you faithful? I remember the parable of the talent. It says that when he welcomed the servant who did well, he said, "Welcome, good and faithful servant. Good and faithful servant, because they changed the status quo of what they were given. Are you faithful? Lord, help me. I want to be faithful." I want to be able to still work your gift. I want to be faithful because I know you're faithful to me. Father, we thank you, Lord. At this time, I want us to remember those that we know that probably you are praying for the for for the salvation of their soul. Can you put them in your prayers right now? It might be your children, it might be your friends, it might be your boss. That Father, in the name of Jesus, you will meet with their heart in the name of Jesus. You will meet with their heart in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that the heart of kings are in God's hands and like rivers of waters. He turns it to wherever He wills. That Father, I commit your heart into your hands, O oh God. You know, maybe you have even tried. You have preached, you have did all, but nothing is happening. But now, just commit your heart into God's hands. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Please, if you have a neighbor, you can hold your neighbor. It's a family. Can you bless your neighbor? That they will have testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus. That their lives will be a testimony. In the name of Jesus. Maybe there are people that people have been really even looked down on. That you will be celebrated. Can you bless? Bless in the name of Jesus. Bless. 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 protected that your God given gift is being stirred right now in the name of Jesus that you will not go with the tide you will not go with the preparation of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus that at such a time as this you are set apart in the mighty name of Jesus Wisdom is supplied to you. This new week you are going into wisdom is supplied to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Wisdom is supplied to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Wisdom, wisdom, help is supplied to you. In manifold. Favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Favor in the name of Jesus. Favor of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. If your heart is broken, just ask God to heal you. I want to tell you there's no amount of browsing how to heal heart, how to heal broken heart that is going to help. No amount. Except to truly yield that to God. The Bible says that he has an anointed 
to heal the broken heart. Someone you are not going to give up because God will heal your heart in the mighty name of Jesus. I say God will heal your heart. What you think you have lost, the Lord will come bearing it in a much more better package for you. In the name of Jesus, he will double what you have lost. I say God will double what you have lost. In the mighty name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' name, have a blessed week. Thank you.